we need to restart all that for copyright claims on YouTube. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, all right. we just we just did our first podcast, everybody. We just did our whole first podcast and completely okay. we completely f- it up because we left music playing. We we had the music playing the yeah. whole time. That was really dumb. Yeah. It's uh it's pretty upsetting that neither one of us noticed that. That's pretty bad, yeah. Uh, okay, so we don't really have a name for this podcast, but people have requested that this become a podcast. So why don't we just call it like Off the Road in 10 Minutes? Did you just come up with that? I'll be honest, I came up with that about five minutes ago. And yeah. we're, now we're trying to kind of reverberate. Exactly. Reiterate. I, I think regenerate. it's Regenerate. I think it's fine. For the first one, we can always change the name. Yeah, we can call it Off the Road in 10 Minutes. I wasn't sure about it five minutes ago either, but let's just do it. Let's just go with it for the first one. I'll be honest, I really don't like your attitude. So everybody might be able to comment and maybe help us pick a name. What do you think? Is that dumb? Maybe, maybe it's dumb. Yeah. Well, let's launch into our first topic. So we wanted to talk about uh, three different things. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about was the fact that I put up a video the other day and I was talking about... We were talking about the top American off-road vehicles. American. American. That was the key. Correct. Yeah. A lo- and a lot of people commented Toyota, which I- I'll say was surprising because I have never regarded Toyota as being a, an American brand. And then there was a lot of argument in the comment section about the fact that Toyota is an American brand because a lot of Toyotas are made in America. The the thing that comes to mind is a, a earlier draft we did a while ago where you picked the Hilux and I said the Tacoma for the rest of the world, which I do get that the Tacoma may be American. So, but well, it's not an American brand. The you mean Toyota? Yeah, Toyota is not an American brand. The truck might be. American made and maybe even American designed, but you still can't pick it in American draft. You know what's the funniest thing is it's the most American thing to, to, to take a brand that started Japanese, that is a Japanese <laughs> brand, it, yeah. and then just be like, it's American yeah. now. Yeah. They just they make some of their stuff here, so it's just now it's American. Yeah, it's American made, so it's, it's ours. Uh, but not all of their products are obviously American made, so. I, I, it's just, to me, it's the most ludicrous claim. I actually think somebody did say that in the comments where they were like, it's more American than a Ford because Ford yes. is, uh, Ford is made in made Mexico, in Mexico yeah. and so on and so forth. Okay. I, I get the like sort of hyperbole that they're trying to use, but I, I just, and maybe I'm taking this too seriously. Well, let's be honest. I am taking this too seriously. But You are, but the comment section was great. And but I think a lot, lot of people were taking this too seriously. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, and it sparks a larger debate, which is, does a foreign brand ever become a domestic brand by way of their manufacturing and not their sort of like lineage or heritage or point of origin the heritage part is the thing that stood out to me on another comment that you were talking about in terms of the jeep being owned now by is it fiat stellantis technically owns jeep yeah which is a a brand in the netherlands Uh, or something like that i think i I can't remember but the jeep is an american brand but Jeep is an American One million brand. percent. Whereas Toyota is a Japanese brand. Right. I think this comes like almost to a point of brand recognition. A That's lot of a people idea. commenting clearly don't watch other uh, videos of yours because they were, they were like, oh, the Forerunner is, uh, must be on this list. And we both own Forerunners. So that was, yeah. kind, of, that was kind of an insult um, because they don't watch any of your other content. Um, it is insulting to think that they wouldn't be watching the greatest channel to have ever hit TikTok. People can get in early right now because we're at like 30K on TikTok or something like that. Oh, they yeah. can get in real early on this. This is like, just the start. Really yeah. cash in on this. Yeah. Thing. We're yeah. about to have 250 YouTube subscribers after this. Um, Maybe 300. But our bigness was the K5. Yeah. I that, don't know, really. that was a big 
That was a big one. We both forgot it, and it probably deserves to be on the list. And mind you, for all those viewers watching at home, when we do these, we literally sit down and we're like, let's, let's do a draft real quick. Let's do it right here and now. And we just think of yeah. things on the spot. So it's not, we don't really plan these out. Like no, we half, just, the, half the time I was thinking of a specific car, which I've gotten made fun of by Tim for. Yeah, Tim. You, yes. Friend and foe of the show, you know. Yes, uh, for sure. Okay, so let's move on to our next topic. Uh, the second thing we were going to talk about was uh, what got us into, like, the overlanding, off-roading space, whatever it is. For me, I've always been interested in cars since I was a little kid. But um, a few years ago, I um, ended up with a forerunner and basically through internet searches and stuff like that, started figuring out more and more about, like, what, overlanding was and I was like oh this is kind of a cool thing and I'll be honest like when I first started building the four or putting together the forerunner god I know people are going to kill me if I say I can't say bolting yeah I, I bolting know bolting on stuff to the forerunner yeah, people are going to like lose their minds if I say build when pieces started going on to the forerunner I was like oh I might do some light off-roading wheels tires suspension that seems like the general like consensus as to what you should do and so I started getting into it like that. And I was like, I'll never have a rooftop tent. I have no interest in that kind of stuff. Did the first trip you take in the Forerunner affect that kind of change? Where you drove from Maine all the way to Wyoming? So that's what really spurred it on is actually one of the very first places I ever stopped was uh, running for tacos. <laughs> we got uh, the grill changed out on the front of the Forerunner. I saw their Tacomas that they had built. And I was like, man, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And so I was like, I have to start doing that. Did I that think... remind you of the uh, like Hiluxes that you had seen? There? I'd had a lot of experience with Hiluxes in Honduras. and Those were stock, though, right? Oh, completely. Yeah. That's the most hardcore off-roading I've, I've ever been a part of. And it was in completely stock vehicle. I couldn't believe the stuff that they did with stock vehicles. Like As a really quick story, I remember we were coming down this mountain pass and these two ruts had formed and there was just this this high point in the middle of the road. And it was just this really steep section of mountain pass. And I was standing in the bed of the Hilux because the cab was full of everybody else. And it was me and somebody else in the, in the back of the truck. And he tried to, to kind of um, walk along the tops of these ruts, but it was muddy and washed out and everything. And he just fell right into it. And he had enough traction and it was steep enough that he could keep going down this road. But the entire time we were just sliding on the underbelly of this Hilux. And With like he, six people in the truck. Yeah. And he drove probably 200 yards and it was just tearing up the bottom of this thing. And I was like, oh. no problem. As soon as he got to the bottom, just drove off. And I, I think like 10 minutes later, we drove th literally through a river. And that affected a lot of my opinions on like Toyotas in general. And I, I wasn't, I don't, I wouldn't say that I was particularly partial to them to begin with, but I was like, oh, they're good. You know, my dad had a Tundra and stuff like that. And I, I knew them and I liked them. But yeah, it was when I saw their Tacomas out in Colorado and I was like, this is really cool. I was like, this is a really cool thing to do. I grew up in Maine, which is a very like outdoorsy state. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just, I, I really enjoyed it and I've just been eager to learn more as, as I go. But yours is a lot different because you've gotten into it more recently. You're an outdoorsman and you wanted it for... For sport, really, for, yeah, for I access. Wanted, I just wanted to get fly fishing and camping. Yeah. And then you kept convincing me to do it for the gram and just buy stupid shit. Now I have a really cool rig. And I'm also learning a lot about it because, uh, honestly, I'm not a car guy. I really enjoy it. I broke in the tent, finally, in Ocala, and that was awesome. Yeah. So, that was really I'm cool. I'm a true overlander now. Yeah. I see this is the thing I like the most about overlanding though is that you can you can bring a lot of different sides into it and a lot of people that aren't like car people you can get into it which I think is like one of my favorite parts. A lot of people are outdoor people. They want to be outside yeah. and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. these cars take you to places where you're away from people and outside and it's beautiful which is the whole point. You can go spend a day down at Uari or like Windrock or whatever and like tear your th your your truck up your forerunner, whatever it is, 
uh, on trails, right? And that's the goal, right? Is just to do the off-road, to really like challenge the vehicle, see what it can do. But you can also make it into a trip where, you know, you're, you're accessing remote roads to get to a destination, right? Yeah, I've had a great time on your, uh, at Brown Mountain OHV or URE. I've had an even better time on super flat roads in Maine, out in the middle of nowhere. You got no service. You're looking at Katahdin. That was a really cool trip, and there was no off-roading at all. So I think... I mean, we were off-road. Like, we weren't on paved roads. Yeah, we weren't on paved roads. But it wasn't, roads, like, but it wasn't like serious off-roading. Yeah, there was yeah. no technical stuff to, like, kind of overcome. No real challenges, no river crossings or anything. But yeah. you were off the grid, and you were having a really good time. And, and see, this is what I always tell people, too, is, like... See, my favorite, my favorite part about this whole thing is that, that the vehicle that does the, all that stuff, you drive to work on Monday. Yeah. I think that's the coolest part. I agree. Yeah. All right, let's move on to our draft. What are we doing for the drafts? Um, okay, top five draft? Yeah. Top five draft? Yep. Classic off-roaders. I like that category. Okay. Number one, I'm going to start with the original Power Wagon. Because beautiful vehicle, very capable off-road, fantastic truck. And you read the comments. I'm going to go with the FJ40 as my number one. It's a great vehicle. I love it. Very capable off-road, yeah. Okay, next I'm going to go with Defender 90. Very capable off-road as well from just over the pond. I really like the Defender 90. I want to take an old Bronco. The OJ car. Older than that. Yeah. I'll go with like a Jeep Willys, like an original Jeep Willys. Those but things are sweet. They are classic, sweet. Classic, classic, classic. Yeah. Really cool. Like a, like a postal Jeep. Yes. Yeah, those are cool. I'm going to take the K5 Blazer. You also read the comments. I did. Well, with that being said, I will take the Toyota FJ60. Fantastic vehicle so good all around and i love the fj60 i think the fj60 is arguably one of the most beautiful toyotas ever made i'm gonna go for uh, another land rover but i'm gonna go for the series three that's my absolute favorite looking vehicle you have an elliot hair on your face oh really yeah that's been on there the whole time i'm sure i will go with um that made me lose my train of thought. Are we on number four or number five? I think I'm on number five. Okay, number five. I'll go with, uh, you know what I'm going to take? Nope. VW van. You reading the comments again? Okay, I am going to go with an original Toyota pickup, like from the 80s, one of those pickups. Those things, oh my gosh, dude, those things are so capable. They're unbelievably capable. For my final pick, I'm going to go with my favorite Forerunner, first gen. I want that on like 37s or 40s or something crazy. That'd be wild. All right. Well, I guess that oh, can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That concludes. That concludes. Yeah, yeah. And we're our filming first, a podcast too. That concludes our first episode of Off Road in Ten Minutes. Off Road in Ten. It's probably Off Road in Thirty. We talk so damn much. <laughs>